Hadouken everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to make your very own portal. Um, it's been a craze, people did it in Snapchat, and I've seen it done like the first week that AR Kit was out. It's been a big craze to do a portal-like thing with your app. But today we're going to be learning the basics of how you would go about building a portal. So let's just jump right into it. Walk through the portal door and you automatically get inside of the little box here. All right, so first things first, open up Xcode, create a new Xcode project. This will be an AR kit app. Product name, it's gonna be Portal 3 because someone's gonna make it, am I right? Up top. <laughs> but then you're gonna go ahead and create. Then once you're inside of your project, you're gonna go ahead and create a new Swift file. For your file name, this is gonna be our extensions. This is gonna be stuff that we're gonna be using inside of our viewcontroller.swift quite often. Then once you're inside of your extensions file, we're gonna go ahead and import scene kit and AR kit. After that, you're gonna go ahead and create three variables, our width, height, and length. Width will be 0.2, height will be 1, and our length will be equal to 1 as well. And then we want to make sure that these variables are CG float, so go ahead and put colon CG float in front of all of those. Then after you're done with that, we want to go ahead and create a new function. This function is going to help us create our boxes or our walls that will create help us create our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and say func create box, and then inside of those parentheses, you're going to say is door colon bool and then we want to make sure that it's returning a scene node the reason we put is door because if it is a door we're going to go ahead and register as a different length for those walls the way you can think of it is we don't really create a door in and of itself we create everything else except the door <laughs> just just one way of thinking about it and then at the end of this function you can see it's expecting the return of a scene node so let's go ahead and add that into our function so we're going to say let node will be equal to a scene node in which we want to return that node as well and now let's go ahead and add two boxes in there one of them will be our inner box and the other one will be our outer box the inner box will be our scene the, the thing that you walk into and then the outer box will be the invisible part that's how all of this works. So in order to create our first box, we're just going to say let first box equal a scene box in the which we give it our width, height, and length of the variable specified above. And then for our chamfer radius, we're going to set that to zero. Then we want to go ahead and take this geometry and apply it to a scene node. So we're going to say let first box node equal a scene node with the geometry of our first box. Then we want to go ahead, and this is very important, to have a rendering order higher than our masked box. That's all that really matters here. It could be 100, it could be 2, just as long as it's higher than our masked box. I'm going to go ahead and set mine to 200. And that applies to everything that is inside of your box. So if you have trees or plants or whatever you have inside of your scene that you're walking into, you want to make sure that that, again, has a higher rendering order than our masked box. Very important. The higher the rendering order, the slower it takes to render. So we want to make sure that the outside is rendered before the inside. And then Finally, we're going to go ahead and say node.addChildNode and add our first box node. Done. And now let's work on our masked box. So we're going to go ahead and do exactly what we did above. Let masked box equal a scene box with the width, height, and length as specified above as well. Chef for radius, of course, will be equal to zero. But then after creating the scene box, we want to do a couple things first. We're going to mess around with the material of it. So we're going to say first material dot diffuse dot contents will be equal to UI color dot white. Really, it could be any color except clear because we also want to say first material dot transparency will be equal to 0. 0.0001. We can't have it at zero completely. We just want to get it as close to zero. If it's zero completely, it's just going to look black. So 0. 0.0001. Then once we have that created, we're going to say let mass box node equals scene node, give it the geometry of our mass box. Then we want to go ahead and set the rendering order again lower because this is our mass box lower than all the other items. So this is going to be 100 in this case. Then for our mass box node dot position, we're going to set that equal to a scene vector three in the which we want to go ahead and not place it on top of the other box. We want to put it right next to it. So we're going to go ahead and for our X value, we're going to set that to the width. And then for our Y and Z value, we're going to set those to zero. Again, that's just placing the box right next to the other box. And now that we have our mass box done, the next thing we need to do is start working with our is door variable. So what we're going to do is create a new variable up top called the door length. Colon CG float will be equal to 0 0.3. And this variable here is going to allow us to have a gap where the front door is. Then the way we want to start using that length is to go over to our length in our first box and say is door question mark door length colon length. So this is testing whether or not is door is true and using the variables depending on whether or not it's true or false. There you have it. If it's true, door length. If it's false, length. And we want to go ahead and apply that same logic to our mass box down below. 
And also at the time of editing, I do realize that I don't have the mask box node yet. We'll do that in just a little bit. But now let's go back over to our viewcontroller.swift and start creating the scene. But let's go ahead and create a wide gap, create a new function called setup scene, and we wanna create a node. And then we're gonna take that node and apply it into our scene view up above. So we're gonna go ahead and say self.sceneview.scene.rootnode dot add child node and then then we're going to add our node it's a lot of typing but that's how you do it but there we have it but then we have that node so now we're going to add the walls into this node so first off we need to create the walls so i'm going to go ahead and say let left wall equal create box is door false done we're going to mess around with the positioning and euler angles and whatnot but for now we have our left wall but let's go ahead and do that for all our other walls so left right top bottom and then we also want to go ahead and do our left door side our right door side and of course for the create box we want to say is door and we're going to set that equal to true this time around so now we have our left right top bottom back wall all the doors created now let's go ahead and start messing around with the positioning of them all so it's all fairly simple we're just going to go ahead and say left wall dot position will be equal to a scene vector three dot in it in the wick the x value will be equal to our negative length divided by 2 and our y and z value will be equal to 0. Now the reason we're putting this at negative length divided by 2 is because you can think of our x value as 0. So we will be acting as such for everything. So if we want our wall to go to the left we actually need to go in the negative. If we go in the positives we're going to go to the right for anything that we work with. y variables this is positive this is negative. z variables this is positive this is negative. Just how things work. And we want to apply that logic to everything. So for our left wall, negative length divided by 2. For our right wall, it's going to be length divided by 2 because we want it to go in the positives. For our top wall, though, we're going to be messing around with the y variable. So this will be our height divided by 2. For our bottom wall, again, going down, we're going to put this as our y variable going down, negative height divided by 2. Then also, if you missed it, uh, we're going to create a back wall as well. So we're going to say let back wall equal create box. And this, of course, is not a door. Then for the positioning of this, we're going to mess around with the z axis this time around. So x, y will be 0, and then our z axis will be equal to our negative length divided by 2. Then for our left and right doors, we have to mess around with things a little bit differently because of just how things work. So for our left door, we're going to go ahead and set our x value to negative door length divided by 2, as well as setting our z value to length divided by 2. Then for your right door, we're going to say door length divided by 2. This will be the positive this time around. And then our z axis will, of course, be our length divided by 2. We're just going to keep it the same as our left. And that should do it for the positioning of all the objects. Now we need to go ahead and add this into the node that we created at the beginning of this function. So we're just going to go ahead and say node.addChild node and add all of those objects in. Simple. Up, down, left, right, top, bottom. If you don't know what a quark is, it don't matter. You still got them. The bosons, the electrons, and that's something the best. I need, to, I need to read that again, but Hank Green's song about quarks. Check it out. But once you have all of those things added, you're going to go ahead and say node.position will be equal to the scene vector 3 of 0, 0, 0. I'm just going to spawn this right on top of myself as we build and run this project. Now, of course, this is just for tutorial purposes. Do your own thing when you are working on your own project. Then finally, for our piece de resistance, we need to go ahead, go to the view did load and type in setup scene. And that's going to go ahead and call that function so it starts working. And then lastly, before we build and run this, we need to go ahead and delete that pesky ship inside of our scene. So we're going to go ahead and go to ship.scene and just delete the ship. But after that, we're good to go. All right, so first thing, our walls are definitely a bit too thick currently. So we need to fix that. But also, you're not noticing any like transparency on one side. And I think we need to add a light in order to see that properly. So let's get that done as well. So I'm just going to go back to the width there and set it to 0 0.02. And that should fix whatever issue we had there. But also the positioning of all our walls was proper, but now we just need to turn them. We need to turn them in the correct direction. So we need to mess around with our Euler angles, in other words. So we're going to go ahead and say left wall dot Euler angle will be equal to a scene vector 3. And then here's where things get a little bit difficult. Now, if you know how to work with radians, go ahead and use radians. But I like using extensions to make degrees to radians really easy. So we're going to go back over here to our extension, create an extension for our floating point variables. And we'll go ahead and say deg var degrees to radians colon self open close curly brackets in the which we want to go ahead and say self times dot pi divided by 180. And that's going to go ahead and convert your degrees to radians. Now, just for safekeeping, and if you want to do this yourself, uh, you can also do radians to degrees. It's very simple. It's just the exact opposite of what we did there with self 
times 180 divided by dot pi. But now that we have all those working, that should make Euler angles very easy for us. So going back to our left wall, we're going to set our x to 0 because we don't want it rotating around our x-axis, but we do want it rotating around our y-axis. So we're going to go ahead and say our y-axis will be equal to 180 point zero dot degrees to radians. Then for our z value, we're going to set that to zero as well. Now for a right wall, that is all properly positioned, so we don't need to mess around with that at all. For our top wall, though, we want to go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees around our z axis. So it's going to be scene vector 3, 0, 0, 90 degrees to radians. Done. Then do the opposite for your bottom wall, so this will be 0, 0, negative 90 degrees to radians. For your back wall, we want to go ahead and rotate it around the y-axis, but we only want it to rotate 90 degrees. So go ahead and do that. And then for your left door and right door, we want to go ahead and rotate it around our y-axis, negative 90 degrees. And that does it all. And then finally, as I mentioned, we need to go ahead and create a light. This is very important for rendering our scene. So I'm going to run this over pretty quickly, but it's a light, so go ahead and pause the screen at any time if you need to write something down. But it is let light equals scene light, light.type equals dot spot, light dot spot inner angle will be equal to 70, our spot outer angle will be equal to 120, our z near will be equal to 0 0.0001, and then for our z far, we're going to just set that equal to 5. Light dot cast shadows will be equal to true, our shadow radius will be equal to 200, our shadow color will be equal to a UI color dot black dot with alpha component of 0 0.3, we want it to be somewhat see through. And then for our shadow mode, we're going to keep that to dot deferred. And that's it for our light. Now we need to create a constraint for our light to look at. So we're going to say let constraint equals scene look at constraint in the which our target is going to be our bottom wall. You can of course make this any wall that you want, left, right, top, bottom, but I'm going to make it aim at the bottom because I want it to be like a ceiling light. Then with our constraint, you want to say is gimbal lock enabled and set that equal to true. And now that we have our light and our constraint made, we need to apply this to a node. So I'm going to go ahead and say let light node equal scene node, and then light node dot light will be equal to light. Light node dot position, and this is a little bit wrong, we'll fix it later, but our x value will be equal to 0, our y value will be equal to height divided by 2, and then our z value will be equal to 0 as well. And then we want to take that constraint and apply it to that light node. So we're going to say light node dot constraints will be equal to open close bracket, put in your constraint that you made. And then finally, that's it for your light. So go ahead and say node.addChildNode in the which you're going to add your light node. Now let's give it a run and see what we get. And now here's where I figure out that I did something wrong. So let's go back over here to our create box and say node.addChildNode, our masked box node. Boom. <laughs> now let's build and run it and let's see what we get. And there you have it. When you built and ran that, you should be able to see that you are in a box. You respond into a box. Now, our door position is off a little bit, but for the most part, we have things working pretty good. But when you walked outside, you are actually able to see two doors. <laughs> I know it's only supposed to be one door, but you're able to see doors leading into an invisible portal. Pretty sweet. Now, the other issue that we're getting from this is if you look at the top or the edges, you are able to see the edges or the top wall. And that's just not a good user experience. So we also need to fix that. Now, the way that we fix this is go to our positioning and I'll demonstrate it with this left wall. So we want to go into the left wall here. We want to take the negative length divided by two, put those in parentheses, and then we want to take that and plus or add the width. So that's going to make it so the wall moves in. And that's very important because now the invisible wall will be the only thing that people will be able to see as an edge and that's invisible. So, <laughs> but you're going to take this logic and apply it to our right wall. So go ahead and you're going to say length divided by two minus our width this time though, to make it go in. You're just trying to make each little element element of the box go in. Top wall will be height divided by 2 minus width. Our bottom wall will be negative height divided by 2 plus width. For our back wall, it will be negative length divided by 2 plus width. Now with our left and right door, things get a little bit more complicated because we have two portals. But now we need to mess around with our x value because after a little bit of writing down on paper and trying to figure out this equation on how to do it, I've got it. What we're going to do is right in front of our x value where it says negative length divided by 2, we're going to go ahead and say length negative length divided by 2, and then we're going to say plus our door length divided by 2. And then we just do the exact opposite for our right door side, in which it's going to be length divided by 2 minus our door length divided by 2. 
this is the thing that exactly works. Basically, you're just moving the door so that it's centered with your left wall, and then you're gonna take half the size of the door and move it to the right a little bit, and that's going to make it so it works perfectly. And then I also realized as I'm commentating on this that for our Z value, it is still length divided by two, when in reality, it should be length divided by two minus your width. And then finally, with most of the errors out of the way, it took me forever to figure out this last one. As you can see, we have this slight gray shadowing on the bottom half of the outer walls, and that is incorrect. <laughs> we obviously don't want a gray shadowing because that messes with the illusion that we are trying to create. So what we need to do in order to fix this is simple, very simple. We mess with the position of our light. So for our current Y position of our height, we currently have it at height divided by two. Now, I just put this at 0 0.4 and that fixed it for me, but also you can just say height divided by two minus your width. And then that would work just as well. But for now, I'm just putting it at 0 0.4 and that solved the error for me. But after building around this, uh, let, let, let's, let's cut to Jared. Uh, let's, let's see how things are going. All right, so I've got it all figured out now. As you can see, as I turn around here, you'll be able to see I'm in the box as I spawn. Boom, there's the corners and whatnot. Now, let's head out the portal door. And there you have it. We don't have longer have any gray spots here. Uh, we can see slight little fragments here and here that you can clean up after you code a little bit, but for the most part, things look good. Woo! Walk through the portal door and you automatically get inside of the little box here. Pretty cool. Now, of course, you can mess with the box. You can make it bigger. You'll notice that as soon as I step outside the box here, I'm just outside of the box, you know? <laughs> so I'm out. I'm out of the scene. So you can, of course, work to make this a little bit bigger of a scene, mess around with all those numbers and whatnot, but for the most part, it works. If you guys end up using this technique for yourselves, I'd love to see it. Send me a video of it on Twitter or Instagram or any of that stuff. I'd love to see it. Also, what did you think about the format of today's video? I tried something new. I've been watching a lot of Binging with Babish and I tried to make a format similar to his because I liked how it was presented. It just made his informative videos a lot more interesting. Let me know if you got, if that portrayed well in a coding video. Anyway, that's it. Have a fantastic day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Three, two, one. Also, I just love this desk, so I'm gonna be doing that like for every video because it's just fun. It's fun. <laughs> Bye.